Right. Um, that's the coldest beer I've ever had. Hey, they don't call it the world's most refreshing beer for nothing. Okay, be honest with me. Do you really have the Rocky Mountains in your beer cooler? You don't believe it? Check it out. Man, that's pretty amazing. I know, right? I can't believe it myself sometimes. I mean, this cooler is only three feet wide. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Hello, everyone. From the Watchdog, I'm Darnell Foster. With a look at your local weather forecast for your Friday. Partly sunny skies through the afternoon. Daytime high near 77. Chilly overnight. Partly cloudy skies, 52 for the low. A mix of clouds and sunshine for your Saturday with highs in the lower 80s. Have yourself a great day, everyone. From the Watchdog, I'm Darnell Foster. The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors. In the year 1898, Mark Cooley sent his first radio message across the English Channel. Good morning, good morning, everybody, good morning. Let's have a tune, I'm sick of this silence. There's nothing wrong with being fun and popular and just giving people what they want. This is not a radio fantasy camp, we're on the air here. You seem happy this morning. Is it Friday already? Friday. Friday. All I'm doing is get it on the air, the revolution will be broadcast. How about Friday? What's this? Did you ever hear of a thing called radio? Thank God! Wow! It's showtime! Live from the Robinson Auto Group Studios in the heart of the Ohio Valley, this is the Watchdog Morning Show with Howard Monroe. So what are we talking about today on the Friday edition of the Big Gig? Not just Friday, not just the end of the week, but really kind of the end of the season, heading off into... Uh, uh, holiday weekend, and then sort of the turn of the seasons, if you will. The back to school time begins next week. But what are we into today here on the show? The ACLU has sued the city as wheeling officials plan to remove several homeless camps along the creek tonight. The WVEA may file an injunction against the state over some back to school decisions. A new nationwide poll shows increasing support of and trust in public health agencies. As COVID concerns dominate the news, social media might seem to suggest that we don't like the public health agencies, but the survey says not so. We'll talk to the pollsters about that. Senator Manchin and Governor Justice are doing battle over a broadband announcement that was made yesterday. Social media postings discuss local child abduction attempts, but law enforcement isn't quite sure what to do about that. WVU students are being disciplined for going to bars without proper precautions. Newspaper editor John McCabe and I will kick around the items of the week in the Ohio Valley News during our Friday roundtable. In the D.C. Digest, did Trump call U.S. war dead losers and suckers? One report says yes, he says no. Facebook is banning political ads the week before the election. And Jimmy Carter is pushing back in support of mail-in voting. Plus, a classic American movie is about to be re-edited for re-release. Americans are losing focus during the pandemic, and the coffin confessor reveals secrets at funerals. Some fun stuff we'll get to as the day goes on. Weather-wise, as you heard Darnell saying, we're looking for a drier and more comfortable day today. Could be a stray shower, but mostly sunny skies today. Certainly by afternoon, it'll be a sunny day. A little bit uh, from, uh, running, roaming around 80 degrees. Uh, officially, uh, I see Zach is calling it as a high of 78 today, but let's call it roaming around 80. And we've got a couple of really nice days in store. Right now, though, as we begin to uh, see the cloud cover dissipate here in the Ohio Valley, it's overcast. 67 degrees at the Wheeling, Ohio County Airport. 66 degrees at my home studios and 66 degrees at the Robinson Auto Group Studios downtown Wheeling in the heart of the Ohio Valley. 7-Eleven on the Watchdog Morning Show. Did you get a game in last night, Brother Biff? Get a round or two in? We did. We had to go up on the hill to get it in, though, but we got it in. 
went up and played. Uh, you had to go up on the hill because? Because the fairway was closed yesterday. Oh. oh. So, yeah. So we uh, went there. An event and of some kind, or were they just closed for, just closed, closed? Just closed, closed. I don't know if it was for weather or what, but. Man, okay. it was it was closed, so we went up on the hill and went up to Beckwood, and ended up uh, getting getting on the back nine before the scramble started. So we uh, got out, played the back nine, and we were good. We got on about I think either the second or third hole, and there was a quick little uh, sprinkle, and it stopped and got cloudy and then towards the end the sun decided to come on through the clouds and we had a little bit of sunshine and finished without any any worries and got the round in and then went to generations for dinner what'd you have i yeah you, you're my you, i enjoy talking to you every friday because i get i get a sense of having food out i can't go out so what do you what did you have last night I went. Uh, I was in a burger mood last night, so I had the okay. uh, the G Mac last night. Oh, I, that's good. Yeah, I've had that. Yeah, that is good. I've been in a burger mood a lot lately too. Have not had one. I think I may even sit on the air a couple of times. I've been feeling like a burger. I think Zach and I talked about burgers one day this week, and maybe this weekend we'll have burgers on the grill. I don't know, but I've been in a burger mood and just haven't had one. So, yeah, the G Mac sounds uh, sounds pretty good. Here we are, Biffy, on Labor Day weekend. Um, you and I will be off on Monday, so folks can take a break from us. We'll take a break from them, <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll enjoy a day off, and you all can have a long holiday. This is the holiday weekend, right? I, I lose track. This is the holiday weekend, isn't it? Yeah, you are correct. Monday is uh, Labor Day. So uh, hopefully you all have a, a good extended holiday weekend this weekend. Um, this is kind of the traditional turn of the season, if you will, Biffy. I know when I was a kid, of course, back when I, way back when in the old days when dinosaurs walked the earth, when I was a kid, school never started until after Labor Day. Of course, it's not starting this year until after Labor Day either because of the pandemic. So school never got going till after Labor Day. Um, so that was, this was kind of the last real weekend of summer. Now, there's still plenty of summer left, and Will kids be back in school in a week? Uh, yeah, they're going to stay there. I'm not so sure. Um, but but you know, this year is a little different year. I was thinking back to 1966. It's a summer that I remember well um, because there was a song that was tremendously popular. And I remember listening at the uh, end of the year for the uh, year the, the top countdown of the year on the big WKWK with the good guys, because I, I was rooting for one particular song. And it was a song all about summer is ending, we're getting back to school, uh, you've missed your you've missed your high school love during the summertime, but now you get to see her again. And the song was done by The Happenings in 1966. It had actually been done back in, I think, 59 previously, but the, the big success was in 1966, done by The Happenings, called See You in September. Well, I got thinking this year, this year, it, it, might, might, it might sound a little bit different. It might sound like this. Wow, Moondoggy, this summer sure went fast, and we didn't even get to see each other. But maybe soon, huh? I won't see you September, not in October, maybe not November too, your Facebook posts are mostly just hateful and stupid, and the actual truth is, I won't be missing you, now you know you. When I'm expecting this from you I won't see you in September Maybe not till 2022 Moondoggy? Moondoggy? 
Everything is just different this year. That was one of my absolute favorite songs of my childhood, well, not childhood, my young adulthood, my high school years, what have you. 1966, See You in September. Love that song because, again, it was all about summer is over. We've had our nice, you know, time to lay in the grass and look at the sky and do whatever we're going to do. And now back to school, but it means you get back to see your your summer love or your your your, your school love gets back as well. But who knows, in, in, in 2020, I don't know, as they sang at the end of their Bippy, maybe not till 2022, one, one just never knows. So. I hope it's not that long. Everything is different these days, though everything is different. I won't see you in September or October or November, too. 718 here on the Watchdog Morning Show. Of course, that was from the days of my youth, the days of my childhood, the days of my awakening as a man thinking about women and so on and so forth now here i am at the far end of life at 67 years old uh, looking back i now it's just a uh, now i'm just hoping to have a burger <laughs> for, the, for the weekend that's all uh, and of course I, most of my friends are now officially in retirement they keep asking me why don't you retire short answer by the way is i really love what i'm doing why, why would i give up this gig I get up in the morning and I get to talk to Biff every day. And I get to poke my nose into things happening all around the state and the country and the local area. Um, and, and I can do it from home these days too. Why, why would I, why would I, why would I not want to keep on uh, doing this? But retirement, I guess, to a lot of people doesn't mean the same thing it used to. New survey out says a lot of Americans will do what I'm doing, working into and through their retirement years. The concept of actually retiring just is, is unusual to me. I, 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 I don't really comprehend it. I was involved in a church meeting last night, and at our group meeting, several of the pastors there are officially retiring, one of them after 33 years at a particular church and so on, and, and uh, wishing them well in retirement. And I'm thinking, I just, and then uh, some other friends of mine are just packing up here in the upper Ohio Valley and moving down to Florida to live. And I don't know. Retirement to me just is, it's, it's thoroughly, I, I don't understand it. And again, this survey out from Voya Financial found that almost 60% of baby boomers still in the workforce expect to keep working into retirement. Now, baby boomers are one thing, but it's also true of the gener Generation X. And almost 50% of millennials think that they will continue working into retirement. I suspect that some of us in the boomer generation are working into retirement just because we don't want to quit. Probably the millennials are thinking to themselves, I'll have to do it forever because I'll never be able to make enough money to survive with pensions and so on not being what they were. 56% um, of the people surveyed say, they want to continue working for their own mental well-being. 40% said they want a safety net to cover the unexpected costs in retirement and to prepare them for any stock market volatility that is out there. You may have a great nest egg right now, maybe in a retirement account or a 401k or something, but as we have seen in the past, <laughs> one bad day, shoo, there it goes. So... Some folks are doing that. But I think it's interesting. The number one reason that people say they're going to continue working into their retirement is for their own mental well-being. I know I've said this before, and I don't mean this to be critical of my lovely wife, but uh, Nancy retired a number of years ago, and, and I'm still here working. And we have a really good relationship here because... Get up in the morning and I do the radio show, come in here in the home studio, close the doors, do my show, talk to Biff, talk to y'all. Uh, and before it was doing it from home, I would go down to the office and spend, you know, up until the noon time or so, you know, doing on the radio show. Then, and while I'm doing that, my wife does wifely things. I don't know what all she does. She goes to the store and she does some cleaning of the house and she talks to her friends and all that kind of stuff. So I do my thing and she does her thing. Then uh, you know, sometime in the middle of the afternoon, uh, we get together again. And that works out perfectly. I love being with my wife. Mm, about half the afternoon. <laughs> 
but the idea of just being together all the time would probably drive me crazy, and I would think everybody else as well. And I know it would drive my wife crazy being with me all the time. So uh, mental well-being, I get that. If you can keep doing work, if you can keep working into retirement, it might be uh, better off for you and your marriage and your relationships and everything else. Anyway, a little reflection on life there as I go from see you in September to I want to keep on working until the day I die. <laughs> kind of spanning the lifetime here. All right, we've got some serious stuff to get into this morning, and that's coming up next. The ACLU is suing the city. The WVEA may be filing injunction against the state of West Virginia. And Mansion and Justice, God, I love this time of year when politics pervades everything. Mansion and Justice are going at it over broadband. We'll talk about all of these things coming up on the Watchdog Morning Show. 723, 67 degrees at the Wheeling, Ohio County Airport, 66 at the home studio, and 66 degrees at the Robinson Auto Group Studios downtown Wheeling in the heart of the Ohio Valley. From the Watchdog Network, right now traffic. Here's the latest from the Robinson Auto Group traffic. Home of lifetime powertrain protection. Now, during the Jim Robinson Ford Lincoln Toyota pre owned super sale, select from over 80 vehicles in stock starting under $5,000. Most are local trades, many with one owner. Hurry to Jim Robinson at the Highlands, home of lifetime powertrain protection. A serious injury from an accident can be just the start of your worries. What if you cannot return to work? How do you take care of your family if you are disabled? At Gellner Law Offices, we represent seriously injured people and understand their problem. We know how to get you fair compensation. We will work hard to make sure you get the money you deserve for your losses. Don't go it alone. If you're hurt in an accident, call us at 304-242-2900 or visit us at gellnerlaw.com. We'd like to help. Hello, everyone. From the Watchdog, I'm Darnell Foster. With a look at your local weather forecast for your Friday Partly sunny skies through the afternoon. Daytime high near 77. Chilly overnight. Partly cloudy skies, 52 for the low. A mix of clouds and sunshine for your Saturday with highs in the lower 80s. Have yourself a great day, everyone. From the Watchdog, I'm Darnell Foster. The perfect cure for your quarantine blues. The Watchdog on Facebook Live. Watch The Watchdog weekdays on Facebook Live, beginning with the morning show with Howard Monroe at 7 a.m. Local talk radio, Watchdog style. 
Give us a call and tell us what you're thinking. Locally, 304-214-1600. Out of the area, toll free, 866-514-1600 or 304-232-8255. Conversation you care about from people you know. The Watchdog Morning Show with Howard Monroe continues. By the way, I said I waited in 1966 to see if this was the number one song of the year, and it was not. It was the number two song of the year. It was a great disappointment to me when the good guys picked it for number two of the year. I think um, a Lou Christie song made it number one that year. but uh, So it was not number one. And I, I waited. I listened to the entire year, uh, top 100 of the year, whatever it was on the radio back at that time. And it was because uh, I wanted that to be number one, but it wasn't. It was number two, number two of the year. See you in September. Um, listen, you're not going to embarrass me or you're not going to get me upset when I get a text like I just got here. Talking about retirement. So sure, Howie, if you had a physical job, you'd change your mind. More than 14 hours a week, that's what I call a long day. Well, let me be clear, first of all. I put a lot more than 14 hours a week into this show. In fact, the, uh, if there's anything that it, it does make me want to retire, it's that the, 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 the prepping, prepping for the show never stops. There is never a time when I'm not thinking about tomorrow. What's tomorrow going to do? What am I going to do? Do I have to get guests? What's the what's the news? So, uh, it, it is no by no means a 14-hour-a-day job. It's a 24-hour-a-day job, taking out some time for sleeping. Uh, and when I'm sleeping, my mind is kind of a buzz about that as well. Having said that, I'll defend myself on that. Uh, listen, if I was mining coal, I guarantee you I would want to be retired. Uh, if I was, uh, I don't know what, painting houses or doing roofing, if I, if, yeah, right, ab- absolutely. No question about it. I come into the radio station and talk on the radio. I slave over a hot mic. That is not the same thing as shoveling coal. Theoretically speaking, you don't shovel coal really anymore. Um, so I, you won't, I agree. Absolutely. I would certainly, I would certainly be changing my mind completely. Um, if I had a different kind of job. The point about not wanting to retire is I like my job. I enjoy what I'm doing. And sometimes it isn't even physical. I know I've told the story many times. One of my very closest friends uh, who is now retired, but uh, for two years before he was retired, he counted down every single day. I could tell you, go, you know, 422 days till retirement. He had a desk job, but he was looking forward to retirement. I love what I do. So, I'm not going to get embarrassed. I'm not going to get upset, and I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah, if I had a different kind of job, I, I would not be feeling the same way about retirement. No no question about it. Yesterday on the show, we had Dale Lee, the president of the WVEA. Um, we're talking about going back to school, and you could tell the day of if I think you could tell. Dale really was a little bit more agitated than he has been in the past. He's usually a kind of a calm guy. I mean, he's got strong opinions on some of this stuff, but he, and he, I think he even said, he said, you may notice I'm a little bit more upset than I have been. My wife commented on that afterwards. She said, I think Dale Lee was really upset about some of what's happening in terms of getting ready for school. Um, and did you sense that, Biffy? Did you sense that he was particularly irritated yesterday? Yeah, I think you could tell it more than any other time that we have had Dale on. And before you know, he may uh, he may crack a joke here or there, or you, you could tell he was in a good mood. But but not yesterday. I think yesterday yeah. again was the was the first day that you could really tell he was he was frustrated. And I asked him a question at one point. I simply said, "What's next?" And he took a long, deep breath and he said, "Well, that's a good question." Well, we now know a little bit of what's next. Yesterday afternoon, Dale Lee and the president of the Monongalia County Education Association got together and said they're going to file an injunction against the state of West Virginia, specifically involving Mon County. And the issue is this. Uh, If Mon County remains in the orange or moves to the red on the state color-coded map, 
uh, in-class instruction will not take place for the first week of school. But if they are not in those categories, there will be in-school instruction. And Monongalia County teachers want to have, and the Monongalia County, I think, school board has agreed to do remote learning for the first part of the school year. But the, the state is saying you got to live by the color-coded map, and you got to follow the guidelines that we set up for you. So you may want to do all remote learning, but we want you in the classroom if you can be. So the uh, WVEA and the Mon County Education Association is, um, I don't think they filed it as of yet, according to the story I'm reading from the State Journal, but they are considering filing an injunction um, against the state against the state, I assume the state school board, uh, in order to allow Monongalia County to make their own decisions about remote learning. Dale Lee in this uh, article says, while I can appreciate the work that's gone into the color coding map, it doesn't take into consideration the stress the system puts on families or daycare or educators who are trying to prepare for educating the students. Flip-flopping back and forth between in-person and remote learning is chaotic, stressful and does not present a good learning environment for our students and that's something I've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks the two things you, you, you can quote me on this you all can quote me on this the two things the schools have to be concerned about the most number one safety and welfare of students and staff that's the number one concern but close to that is consistency is being able to let their parents and their staff and the students know what is going to happen? And you can't be sitting around saying, well, wait, maybe we're going to be in the classroom. Maybe we're not. Maybe we'll have remote learning. Maybe you'll come in here. We'll just have to wait and see. Let's see what the color-coded map shows. Then let's see if the governor is going to follow his own color-coded map. You can't do that. That's, that, that, prevent, pre that creates, to quote Dale Lee here, a stress among all of your stakeholder groups. And so, um, the WVEA and the Monongalia County Education Association is uh, considering an injunction against the state uh, and in support of Monongalia County's proposed nine-week remote learning plan. And I think that is the smartest thing you can do. Start this school year off with total remote learning couple of things it does. A, it provides consistency. It gives you a nine-week guarantee you're going to be remote learning. Two, it allows teachers to focus on one kind of learning. You know, the idea of teachers being in-seat educators for two days a week and over-the-internet educators two other days of the week, to me, is just too much, it's too much for any individual teacher to have to deal with. Let's, let's focus on one thing. Let's get your kids acclimated to learning you, know, you don't want your kids to have to be in school in front of a chalkboard or a whiteboard or a projector for two days a week and then come home sitting at their own little desk in front of a, uh, uh, of a computer uh, other days. I I'm with Mon County. Go nine weeks remote learning right up front. Then let's see where in about six weeks, let's see how the numbers are looking like. Will they continue that or not? So anyway, uh, the governor uh, has uh, the governor is always changing his mind on this, and that's got uh, the WVEA upset. Uh, Dale Lee accused the governor of playing politics with his decisions, and I think that's very often the case with everything the governor is doing um, anymore. So there you go, uh, the WVEA. When I asked Dale what's next, and he took a deep breath and said, "Well, that's a good question. I guess we don't know what's next. What's next?" is an injunction against the state. Now, what have we got next? We'll do some news and some uh, sports and some weather, and then I want to get to this story about the ACLU. They are suing the city of Wheeling uh, over plans to remove the homeless camps tonight. I saw a lot of interesting debate on social media in the last 24 hours about this. A lot of folks are saying that they get completely where the police chief is coming from, that you cannot have the amount of crime and violent activity that has been occurring at these camps continue to occur. Um, but an awful lot of folks were raising the same question that I raised yesterday was, which is, what do we do with these folks then? Yes, there's no question there's a problem, but what do we do? What do we do? The ACLU is filing a lawsuit over this. Now, you recall 
They did this back in April as well. The, the city removed one homeless camp, or maybe a couple, I can't remember. They removed some homeless camps on the creek bank, and the ACLU threatened to sue. Um, and I remember talking to Bob Heron, and basically, uh, with due respect to, I'm, I'm interpreting here, basically what Bob was saying was, don't care. I mean, that was it. The truth of the matter is that's what they were saying. I would say, you know, are you concerned about this lawsuit? We have our own plans in mind, and, and we'll review what they tell us. In other words, we ain't paying no attention to them. So we'll talk about that coming up in a couple of minutes. And Joe Manchin and Jim Justice are going at it over the broadband projects. Uh, J.J. announces some yesterday, and Manchin comes out and goes, Wait a minute, Governor. That's not right. You don't, you don't, this isn't your deal. We'll talk about it straight ahead. We are the Watchdog Morning Show. Glad you're here. Friday, final day of the week, heading into a long holiday weekend. The WTRF Channel 7 News Update is brought to you by Thomas Auto Centers. Mall Road, St. Clairsville. Get the best deal at Thomas Auto Centers. Now it's time for your local news headlines from 7 News at WTRF. My Ohio Valley and ABC Ohio Valley. Only on AM 1600 WKKX. The Watchdog. Good Friday morning. I'm Shelby Davis with your 7 News headlines this September the 4th. The American Civil Liberties Union of West Virginia is suing the city of Wheeling as an attempt to halt the removal of several homeless camps. Occupants of these homeless camps have until 5 o'clock this evening to clear their... Yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> Biff, we've got a uh, Radio Row guest at 8.15. Yeah, I can't remember their name. It's, this, it's a poll about public health. Uh, let me see if I can find it here real quick. Just so you know. Do, 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 do. It's in here. Here we go. Um, Brian Castrucci. Castrucci from the De Beaumont Foundation. De Beaumont Foundation. <laughs> I, I, I'm just reading off the sheet here. Castrucci from De, De Beaumont Foundation. That's what it says here. Uh, so that's 815. It'll be a 10 minute. So you know. Buckos back in action this afternoon at PNC Park. They host the Cincinnati Reds in a doubleheader. First game scheduled for 4 o'clock this afternoon. Stanley Cup update. Two outstanding games played Thursday. Philadelphia over the New York Islanders. 5-4 to four in two overtimes. That best of seven tied at 3-3. Three, three. Vancouver shut out the Vegas Golden Knights 4 to nothing. That best of seven tied at 3-3. Three, three. Hey, it's Football Friday on the Watchdog. Five local coaches are scheduled from 1235 to 3 o'clock. I'm Bill DeFabio, and I am part of the Watchdog team. Thank you for riding with the Watchdog. Live and local, just the way you like it. It's your turn to talk. From politics to pet peeves, get it off your chest and on the air. The Watchdog Morning Show with Howard Monroe continues. 7.41, 19 till the hour as we're underway for a Friday. Our not just end of the week, but in a sense the end of the summer, kind of going into Labor Day weekend, the traditional uh, weekend that marks the passing of the seasons. Uh, won't be too long now before school starts in many areas. And I guess uh, has school started in some places already, right, Biff? Yeah, over in uh, Ohio, they've over in Ohio. That's yeah. So they've school's started. been in session there. Yeah, okay. So uh, school's getting back in session. Uh, we we have Labor Day this weekend, and it's kind of a 
a turning of the seasons. And it's going to be a turning of the forecast as well. Zach is here from the Big Seven. Looks like we're about to get a little bit better for the next couple of days, right, Zach? Yes, it is. It's looking picturesque over the next few days, including into your holiday weekend. I'm expecting to see uh, partly cloudy skies to kick things off right now, but as the cold front passes, it will certainly drop our mugginess, and then we'll be having some seasonable weather with mostly sunny skies. If I would have, I would have wore the uh, bright blue sky and abundant sunshine <laughs> tie today, uh, but that, that tie will certainly be uh, prevalent and needed for the entire week, and it's looking absolutely beautiful, Howard. The temperature's roaming right around 80, uh, a little below, a little above, but roaming right around 80, which should be really pleasant temperatures. Skies are going to be sunny for a large part, and I guess not too much rain to worry about for the next couple of days either, right? No, into the foreseeable future, I'm tracking rain to return to the Ohio Valley midway through the next uh, work week, but honestly, I'm just been so eager-eyed to change the graphics from the gray and overcast skies to the uh, blue skies. It was definitely a good pick-me-up whenever I walked in here at 3 o'clock this morning to transition those from the gray, dreary skies and uh, having to or getting to move them over to the bright blue skies and uh, the fair weather cumulus clouds behind some of our graphics. Uh, definitely a good pick-me-up, so it's looking beautiful. Again, can't stress enough. Make sure you get outside and soak up the uh, sun rays. You'll definitely want to be having the sunglasses because the sun is always bright, and with no clouds expected to be in the skies this afternoon as well as into your weekend, uh, definitely looks good to have the sunglasses on hand. For people who are watching on Facebook Live, I just put my sunglasses on. <laughs> I have them here. These are, these are actually my grandson's sunglasses. I don't know why he left them here, but... I'll put them on. Uh, in honor of you talking about the need for sunglasses, I'll put my sunglasses on here for a few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to be talking. Shelby and I were talking that we want to try to do a hit in the noon where we both bring in our sunglasses because uh, one of the weekday weather words are sunglasses today. So uh, we kind of wanted to talk with uh, some of our management folks to be, are we okay trying to have a little bit of fun to wear the sunglasses on there just to say it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous looking holiday weekend. So We'll see if uh, you'll have to stay tuned and watch us at uh, 7 News at noon to see if we're actually able to do so. But uh, I appreciate that. We certainly need it. Yeah, and again, so just in honor of that, I've got my sunglasses on this morning as well. For those watching on Facebook Live video or YouTube, you can see me in the sun. It's funny, the five-year-old sunglasses, the five-year-old kid's sunglasses actually fit me. I don't know I don't know why. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to this weekend. It should be just, again, pleasant is a good word to use, I think, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, which means if you're planning cookouts, um, you probably can have a couple of them all weekend long, right? Yeah, definitely good grilling weather. It's going to be comfortable, low mugginess as that cold front drops our dew points. It might take a few hours to really feel it today, but uh, once those dew points drop, and they're expected to be into uh, the low to mid-50s, which is very pleasant and comfortable dew points, um, it is expected to be perfect grilling weather if you want to grill Heck, if you want to take a frying pan out and maybe grill breakfast on Saturday or Sunday, I wouldn't be opposed to having some grill cakes. And then if you want to grill burgers or hot dogs for lunch or dinner throughout any time over the few next few days, even extending all the way into Tuesday, certainly looks good to do so, in my opinion. I love that idea. Outdoor breakfast, too. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I feel like that would be uh, cool. You know, you could just bring a frying pan because obviously you can't really pour... Uh, pancake batter on a grill unless you bring yeah, that a fillet out. That would be a little <laughs> bit of a problem. Definitely would be a mess to clean up for sure. But uh, that's, I think that's, that's, a, that's a pretty cool idea. I like, I like the sound of that. <laughs> uh, I, I know I've asked this before. Do you have any big plans for the weekend? Uh, you're probably working on Monday, I guess, right? Yes, I am working on Monday, but I actually was supposed to be staying home, but my parents are actually moving uh, into my dad's parents' house in the foreseeable future, so they asked me to come home because I have a lot of sports memorabilia up in my bedroom at home so I actually have to go home and pack a bunch of my uh, pucks and signed jerseys and put them away and they feel more comfortable with me doing it since I'm pretty particular about things and you know you don't want an autograph of like uh, Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux to get smudged in the moving process so they're going to put all the pressure on me to do so but I'm okay to do that and maybe help them out a few other with a few other things and 
hopefully I'll be treated to a uh, nice cookout on Saturday, maybe there with a go. burger or a hot dog, and definitely going to get both if they uh, have both. <laughs> what's your What's your most exciting piece of sports memorabilia? What's the What's the one or two things that you just Oh my God, these are great. So I'll give you two. So one is actually I'm a I grew up a very big Peyton Manning fan, so I'm actually very proud. I have three of his mini helmets, one from his uh, college, a Tennessee volunteer signed mini helmet. I have the signed mini helmet of him with, from the Colts, and then I have one when he was in the Broncos. So I have three Peyton Manning signed mini helmets, and then my one, one other, which is probably, probably a one-of-one one piece. I have a four-foot-by-six-foot four Pittsburgh Penguin Stanley Cup banner, and it's like one of those vinyl banners that you would see hanging up in like Dick's Sporting Goods. I had a buddy yep. get that for me, and I got it signed by Sidney Crosby as well as Evgeny Malkin. They had two their big faces and pictures of them on the uh, vinyl picture, and I have that hanging up actually in my basement. But it's a four by six foot. I don't think anyone else has one. I've been talking to people. I've been growing up going to the Pittsburgh Penguins practices, and actually have a few friends out from the uh, Cranberry area over in uh, Pennsylvania. And I don't think anyone has something like that. So those would be my two most cherished items in terms of my sports memorabilia collection. That sounds like some pretty neat stuff, though. Sounds like sounds like you got a pretty good collection. Oh, I have a, for being 23 years old, I have a very extensive uh, autograph collection that I'm sure a lot of sports memorabilia or sports people in general would be in awe, ooh and awing over, and I'm only 23, so I'm just excited to continue to expand on my collection. Definitely hope to have a. Biff, I think nice one of these days you may want to go into his basement and see what he's got hanging out there. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least if nothing else, just to look at. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Zach, have yourself a great weekend. We are not here on Monday, in case you didn't know, so I will okay. not talk to you on Monday, but we will be back on Tuesday. Uh, you enjoy your holiday weekend, uh, whatever it brings to you, and have some burgers, have some dogs, and enjoy time with your family. We'll get together again on Tuesday. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Howard. We'll see you, Beth. Happy uh, Labor Day, everyone. All right, same to you. All right, our buddy Zach from the Big 7, WTRF-TV, checking in this morning here on the Watchdog Morning Show. We're looking at 67 degrees at the Wheeling, Ohio County Airport, 66 at the Robinson Auto Group Studios down in the heart of the Ohio Valley. i got to take these glasses off. I can't. <laughs> I look like a goof with these sunglasses on, seriously. i uh, got to take those off. But when he started talking about sunglasses, I realized, I don't know why, Teddy had left these sitting on the table at my home studio last night, so I thought I would, I would put them on in honor of, uh, of Zach. Uh, it is a football Friday. I should mention that here at 7.50, 10 before the hour. Um, coming up today at 10, um, actually before we get into football, it's a statewide talk line. Hoppy Kirchival has a number of things that I want you to be aware of today because some good stuff uh, coming up on Hoppy Show. Uh, including a look at some of the latest back-to-school information. There will be some talk about sports with Tony Caridi dropping by to join Hoppy today. Um, not everybody is happy with this. I think it's a great idea, uh, but uh, WVU players are going to be wearing Black Lives Matter stickers on their helmets, and that's got some folks a little distressed, and Hoppy will be talking about that with uh, Tony Caridi coming up today on uh, Statewide Talk Line. And, of course, it is a Friday, which means... ...release in the final half hour of the show, where Hoppy uh, sits silent, and y'all just call in, and you can say anything you want to say as long as it's legal, and you can even criticize Hoppy, and he is not allowed to respond. And he's usually pretty good about that. He doesn't respond. I've done that from time to time myself where I've done these kind of little segments where I say, you know, you can call in and criticize me and I won't talk back. But I have a hard time not talking back. <laughs> I have a hard time not, not responding. Hoppy is good about that. So you can call in on Steam Release, criticize Hoppy if you'd like to. You can criticize me. Usually somebody somewhere makes some comment on statewide talk line about me, my liberalism, my eating habits, what have you. So it's uh, statewide talk line comes up today at 10. Then at noon, we head over to the news desk of WTRF-TV for live headlines, uh, followed by the Do the Fabio Variety Show, the Fall Football Friday edition. What did he say? Five coaches on today, right? 
Yes, five coaches, and I believe uh, one of them will be – actually, two of them, I think. One will be Coach Young from Wheeling Central, I would imagine. Reno at uh, Steubenville. And I think he was trying to get Coach uh, DePew from Lindsley. So I think those, those are going to be three of the five. Now, whoever it is, it'll always be interesting. Bill focuses extensively on high school sports uh, on Fridays, the fall football Friday edition of the show. And we follow it up with the afternoon drive today, which every Friday during football season is our Friday afternoon walkthrough. So uh, beginning with Bill and through the walkthrough, we have all kinds of sports conversation for you this afternoon. Uh, and then Tony Caridi is in at 6 with the statewide sports line. Uh, and after that, we head over to, uh, where are we going tonight, Bibby? JM, right? It's the JM game? It is the JM game, but we'll be, uh, we'll be heading north because John Marshall is... We're to Weirton. Yes, they are at Weirton tonight. Uh, let me check. All right. Uh, 7 o'clock kickoff. Sometimes you get a 7, sometimes you get a 7.30, but no, we are 7 o'clock tonight from Weirton. So just a tad before 7 o'clock, the gang will start uh, the play-by-play for you, Jerry. And who's with him tonight, do you know? Actually, since it's uh, John Marshall, it'll be Coach Heinerman and Ross Johnston tonight. Uh, of course it will be. I should have known that. All right. Uh, that's tonight, uh, beginning a little before 7 o'clock. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. And then tomorrow, it's Wheeling Central. Jerry will be there for that game. Yes. He will be calling the Wheeling Central. And you ready for this one? The Apoka Dots. Yes. That, I love the dots. <laughs> that is that is their nickname. The Polka Dots. I love that. The the Polka Dots will be will be dotting it up uh with the central uh and is, is that a home game? Yeah, that's here, right? That's, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, that, right here. It's at uh, Wheeling University. Yep, that's here at uh one o'clock and then next week Central will be on the road. But yep, they are home this week. All right, so JM tonight and Central tomorrow, basically, and you want to catch all the action. On the Watchdog, AM 1600 and FM 98.1, AM 1370 and FM 97.7. Actually, tomorrow, we should point this out to you, uh, tomorrow on AM 1600, we have a WVU preseason special or season opening special, a special program devoted to looking ahead to the Mountaineers season because, of course, we are now the official voice of the Mountaineers here in the Upper Ohio Valley. So that will be tomorrow, 1 o'clock, Biff, I think? Yeah, from 1 to 3, it is the WVU football season preview show. And then with that in mind, the central game, which you would normally hear on the 1600 981 yeah. frequencies will be moved to uh, AM 1370 and FM 97.7 WVLY uh, in order to accommodate the WVU game. So check check that out. Uh, again, keep in mind, though, Central will play this week on WVLY, so do be aware of that. You can use your it's – it's an afternoon game, so you shouldn't have any trouble picking it up. But if you do want to use the TuneIn Radio app, you can do that or go to watchdognetwork.com and click on the Listen Live links to WVLY on Saturday. So that's a bit of what's coming up today and uh, all throughout uh, the weekend, or at least uh, for the next couple of days. So lots of good stuff. Uh, Monday, uh, holiday for Biff and I, so there will be uh, plenty of good sports talk with the... It's not SB Nation anymore. What are they now? Now they're Sports Map. Yeah, Sports Map. They used to be SB Nation. Now yeah, it's Sports Map Radio. <laughs> we'll be on on AM 1600, and we have a variety of shows for you on AM 1370 and FM 97.7, including um, some uh, a morning look at the news with uh, the folks from America in the Morning, and then Hoppy and Doug Steffen, and uh, special afternoon programming and so on. So uh, tune in. Biffy and I won't be here, nor will Bill, nor will the other afternoon drive folks, but still good stuff. Don't, uh, don't forget us on the holiday. Four before the hour here on the Watchdog Morning Show. Next hour, I want to talk to you about a new survey that's out. If you read a lot of social media postings, if you listen to the squeaky wheels, the loud voices, there are a lot of people who sound as if they are upset about this, you know, public health agencies have too much power. They're trying to, they're trying to destroy America. Health departments are no good. You hear this all the time. Uh, and you see it in social media. 
Uh, but a new survey has been taken, nationwide survey, that says we actually have significant trust in and belief in public health agencies. We'll take a look at that survey with some of the folks who put the poll together uh, coming up next hour here on the Watchdog Morning Show. Let me take a quick second to remind you about our friends at FanDuel. By now you probably have heard about FanDuel uh, Sportsbook's world-class sports betting app. They make it easy to find anything you're looking for and make it easy to place your bets. They've got some of the best odds that you'll find anywhere. And they have constant enhanced odds boosts. And they even get you your winnings in as little as 24 hours, which is a pretty good deal. And so those are some of the reasons that FanDuel Sportsbook is the one that you should try. But I've got one more for you right now. New users to FanDuel can place their first bet on FanDuel Sportsbook risk-free. Whatever the bet might be, uh, you can place that bet. You can place it risk-free. If you win, you win. Life goes on. If you lose up to a 1000 bucks, they will put that back into your account in site credit, and you can reuse that sometime over the next 14 days. So there are all different kinds of ways that you can bet. Uh, I love some of the... Uh, some of the promotions they have here. I was looking at the, I think we talked about this a couple of days ago, the Denver drought bonus, for example. You can place a uh, $25 or more wager on the Broncos to make the playoffs. And if you place that wager, you'll get a $5 bonus in site credit every regular season game that they win. So uh, place your bet on um, the Broncos making it into the playoffs, and then you'll get some extra a boost along the way if they keep on winning games. So that's just one of many, many, many uh, opportunities you have to uh, to bet on FanDuel Sportsbook. But, of course, the first thing you have to do is download the app. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Use my name and row in the promo code box, and that way they know that we sent you here on the Watchdog Morning Show. You must be 21 or older. That's a requirement. You must be physically present in West Virginia or in New Jersey or Pennsylvania because they also are legally allowed to do this. This is involving the first online real money wager only. A refund is issued as a non-withdrawable site credit expiring in 14 days. There are some restrictions. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. And if you can't gamble for fun, if you've got a gaming problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. The Watchdog is FM 98.1, AM 1600, WKKX Wheeling, FM 97.7, AM 1370, WVLY Moundsville. The ABC News is brought to you by Thomas Auto Centers, Mall Road, St. Clairsville. Get the best deal at Thomas Auto Centers. I'm Dave Packer.